Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Don. I remain your host, Dominic, and we have the last match for today Golda versus Google Frog on Alien Desert. Let's get started. Golda going for the tank factory, not the Amphib factory. Google Frog also going for the tank factory. No, sorry, going for the rover assembly. Rover versus tanks. Classic matchup. And I gotta say, I really like the new factory look. Like, it's just. Well, before. I don't know if anyone remember. Well, okay, a lot of people probably remember. Especially the rover assembly. They got. Is that, like, reflective? Holy, yeah, it's totally environment mapped. I love it. Yeah, it used to be with the rover assembly, it was essentially the back half of the dominatrix, and the shieldbot factory still is the front half. But it's now its own thing, and I like that. It looks nice, and it's got pretty reflective textures. Like, this looks amazing. That's how, fact, that's how actually really everything should look, honestly, is that level of environment mapping and specularity and all that. And the tank factory at the same time, that's... I'm not even sure. What, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember what it was before, honestly. But yeah, it was... It wasn't this. It is this now. I think it fits it very well. So yeah, well done to the, ma to the modelers there. Anyway, back to the game proper. We do have a Kodachi coming into Google Frog's base, which should be able to get a metal extractor or two. The darts and scorchers will stop it, but it'll at least slow Google Frog down a little bit. And there's a metal extractor being on fire. And there's Google Frog surprisingly not repairing it. I guess they're just going to let it burn and then rebuild it afterwards. Probably more efficient thing to do, honestly. At least by time. And with the Kodachi down, not, not really going to find a whole lot more mileage. Though at the same time, Golda bringing another one over to the northwest, but with the Cricket already here, the Kodachi will be able to get through, but it's going to be easily spotted. And then there's the Scorchers and Darts coming in here. So Google Frog has got this sorted. That Kodachi is going to have no time to do anything. Getting rid of a couple Darts, sure, but that's 80 metal for the cost of 180. Like, that is worth it. 120. Three darts died. Still, though, totally worth it. 360 metal for one, for, well, 230 something. Yeah. Definitely an advantage for Golda. Sorry, for Google Frog. <laughs> Good job, Golda, burning your units away. So, Google Frog coming in back with the Scorchers. Only three Scorchers with a dart. That shouldn't be enough to get rid of the Commander, though it is an Econ Com, and it doesn't have a whole lot of anything to stop it, and it's also way out of position. If Google Frog catches Golda's Commander out, that could be death. Or would have been if it weren't for the Blitz coming behind it, and that is going to mean, well, still not a great situation. The Blitz... Blitzes have a hard time against this many Scorchers, but it's a bit of a weird matchup. Like, Blitzes are supposed to have a hard time against Scorchers, but I find it's usually the other way around. I find Blitzes, just because of their range properly kited, will get rid of Scorchers no problem. So, with that, Google Frog's forced back again, and we probably will see either... No, we're just seeing a bunch more Dark Scorchers. No Rippers, no Ravagers. Not yet, at least. Well, Google... Golda, on the other hand, continues pushing forward. Google Frog pushes southeast. Actually, also pushing forward. Both, both players pushing forward. So, at this point... There's really no difference between the way they're constructing. The only difference is that Google Frog did it first. Google Frog is slightly ahead in terms of how they're building things up. They have they have an army that is going to still have a bit of a problem here. The, the Blitz is forcing things back, forcing Google Frog into an iffy position. I mean, with the darts being taken out, that's still not fast enough. I mean, the thing is, the Scorchers, they should be fast enough to deal with this, but it's not by much. They're only slightly faster than Blitzes, like 9 elmo per second faster. They're essentially moving at the same speed. So, in terms of micro and during a fight, it's not like you can have the darts go in and then the Scorchers just jump in right afterwards and take out the Blitzes while they're reloading. That's not going to work. Still, though, Google Frog clearly confident that the Scorchers will be able to do something useful at some point, given enough numbers. Because they're going for them hard. It's just a matter of how well that's actually going to work out. And there's the push! There's the attempt to get rid of the Blitzes! And one of them does go down! Second one should be able to escape, but... It's still having a bit of a hard time, and at this point, 300 metal for the cost of about 200, well... Okay, it's still fairly even. In terms of attrition, Google Frog's only about 200 metal ahead. Still, though, this giant army of Scorchers is going to be difficult to deal with. The, the Blitz can't really directly assault it. And the Scorchers, on the other hand, they have enough numbers, they can stop the Blitz. If that Blitz chooses to be stopped. And no, it looks like they're just pushing it back. So, Golda... Managing to build up the center in the meantime, that is the key thing here. Gota has 24 metal per second and is not accessing at all. They have enough production. On the other hand, Google Frog could use another mason helping to build here. And they don't have it. 
I mean, they are building to this out. They're getting power plants. They're getting set up. So at least they have the energy if they need reclaim. It's just a matter of getting the build power to make that all work. And to me, a big part of this is this mason is repairing. So that means it's not using metal, just using energy. Which, of course, means that there's not a whole lot left to be used for construction. Not to mention the fact that there's only 15 build power going into the main factory on top of another 10 or so in the southeast. So I really wish that wouldn't show up. If there was a way of stopping those notifications of Chobby, like, optionally, that would be nice. That's a side note, though. Main note is that... We oh, did I forget to save this? Sorry about that. We have the proper bottom bar. Anyway, with Raptors up, these blitzes won't have as easy of a time. They are going to be forced back. This is also going to allow Google Frog to attack along the south side and possibly just pull Gota into an unfavorable position. I am, however, a little surprised they went for Ravagers. In terms of blocking off the lightning shots, that makes sense. In terms of actually getting rid of the Blitzes, I would go for Rippers, or Ravager-Ripper mix. Still, though, Google Frog quite confident with the Scorchers, and quite confident moving in and pressuring Golda, or at least forcing Golda away from their defenses, but this is Golda going for the standard, the standard Lotus Nest in the middle of the map. This is usually what happens on Alien Desert. You get a Lotus or Picket Nest in the center, along with all these Metal Extractors. And as Golda has taken more of the metal extractors in the center of the map, they very naturally have an economic advantage. That is how games work. But at this point, the Blitzes are getting hit by basically everything. We have fencers, we have scorches, we have ravagers to cover and tank. We have darts just to tank as well and die. But hey, they forced the reload. And a scorcher of the back lines, not able to find a whole lot of success. Able to scout out, able to see what Golda is building, not able to stop any of it. Still, though, the Rippers here providing pressure, this is nice, because it means that Gota can't just hang around and wait for their army to be built up. They're going to be losing defenses, they're going to be losing forces left and right. Of course, that's assuming the Stinger doesn't actually manage to find what it needs to find to get in, and really, this defensive line is a little bit difficult to penetrate right now. Over to the southeast, we do have Thunderbirds being built up, we do have a Vulture as well, so Google Frog can start to set up a bit of radar over to the south, and they see there's nothing built up. Not a whole lot to worry about, really, but at the same time, the Thunderbird is up, and that's the thing to worry about. These these Blitzes, they're going to the southeast... Wait, how do they... I guess they're just guessing. They figure, well, this is an open side, we'll go deal with it. And that's a really good guess, because that's exactly where Google Frog Galactic does not want to have anything come up. At least until right now, the Thunderbirds will be able to stop the Blitzes, or at least will be able to disarm the Blitzes, allowing the Scorchers to come in here and rip them to shreds. But the Thunderbird, where is it going? Okay, it is going after the Blitzes. But the question is, does Google, does Golda know? Well, they know now. They know for sure right now as the Thunderbird is coming in, gets the disabling shots, and with that, should be able to open everything up. I mean, the darts even can get in and start dealing with this stuff. And also slowing down the Blitz's line, the Scorches to come in and rip it apart. Very nicely done. And that dart change is a, is a recent change. I mean, Google Frog, Google Frog is the lead developer and lead balancer, like, does deal with most of the unit-related things in the game, so they know very well how this should work. And that dart change is nice, actually. I quite like the fact that they changed darts to do that, because darts were just, you know, this small damage unit that didn't do much, that mainly just hit stuff for, like, 50, 50 per shot. I mean, they're still dealing, oh, dealing 35 per shot now, dealing a bit less now. But they were essentially just cannon fodder. And now they have a status effect, and that's been a bit of a design philosophy recently. It's most obvious with C, but obvious here, too, is that you have all this stuff here, add a status effect. If it doesn't deal enough damage or do enough interesting things, add slow, add EMP, add something to give it a little bit of extra spice, and that's exactly what was done with the darts, and that gives them a nicely defined role, allowing them to help tear apart this expansion over to the center of the map, help them tear apart the blitzes before, and now that's going to leave everything open, essentially for the fencers to come in here and start really wreaking havoc. So I like that setup. I like this I like this design philosophy. I like the fact that you're adding status effects to make units interestingly useful, rather than just trying to change damage or numbers or whatever else. Just, no. Give them something else to do. So at this point, not a whole lot is here to help stop whatever is going on, and that means that arts can come in, that means the slow can happen, that means the Scorches can tear apart the, the Blitzes, but at the same time, Hawks are up, or Raptors rather, are up to help deal with the Ravens. Which is going to help a little bit, but that's not going to help for the ground control, and that's the real problem, is that Google Frog has a straight shot into Golda's base, and nothing is going to stop it. No Thunderbirds, no Phoenixes, just a few Raptors here and there. I'm not sure what Golda is planning. I don't see anything on the map that would suggest they've got any Strider Hubs or any other factories in the works. 
They do, however, have a Phoenix coming up. I don't see it as being that useful. It seems to be too little too late to me. I mean, this is still good, but the Raptors are still getting rid of the Ravens, which does reduce a lot of the effectiveness of Gorda's, sorry, of Google Frog's air control. And more so, the Thunderbird is at risk, which is a huge blow to the air control. That's exactly what Google Frog would not want to have happen. But still, everything's circling the Ragons around the air pad, and I'm not entirely sure why. This is leaving Gorda loads of room to rebuild, rather than just having a big push into the center. And we do have an Ogre over to the side, which would be a problem for the Scorchers. But like I said, I don't get why Google Frog was circling the wagons. That just led to most of the Scorchers dying and all of their darts pretty much dying. When they had a great force that would push into Golda's base and just destroy it. Or at least heavily damage it. I'm not sure why Google Frog did what they did. I'd be very curious as to why. Still though, they have... They have an attrition advantage, they don't have an economic advantage, and in terms of unit value, I mean, their metal use is starting to get down. Their unit value is even, but Golda has a slight advantage. It's really going to come down to individual fights, and with those, with those Phoenixes dying, Google Frog has managed to pull in a little bit of advantage. The Crashers, that's the obvious choice. And an obvious choice for good reason. But now the question is, of course, Scorcher versus Ogre, and that is the answer. And the answer to that is Ogre. Ogre is entirely designed to deal with Scorchers, it's entirely designed to deal with pretty much any kind of clumped-up raider unit. And there's no... Well, there's a handful of darts. There are some darts to help deal with that as well, which would, obviously, distract the ogre and also slow it down. But I'm not sure how well that would work when you consider that there are three ogres, a half a dozen darts, and Google Frog is not focused on this. Where are they focused, anyway? Oh, they are focused on this. Never mind. They have the Thunderbirds coming in as well, so at least that's going to be something. But it's a question of whether that's going to be effective, and the answer is yes, because the ravens are coming in here, and... Rather, going for gold as commander, which is an interesting choice. I mean, the ogres can get ravens, so it's not like it's entirely free to do that. Mm, that pushes gold as commander back. That does mean things are a little bit more even, but Google Frog is still behind economically. They have some metal extractors they can rebuild, have some areas they can reclaim. The Google Frog right now going for the Newton of all things. I suppose they're planning on pulling those phoenixes into a bad spot if they happen to come in close. Not a bad idea unconventional, but that is what 0k is about. What is conventional, however, is using phoenixes to stop a bunch of raiders over to the north, which is exactly what's happening, and that's gonna be... That's gonna be less effectiveness on Google Frog's part. They are still ahead in the attrition game, but it's hard for them to stay ahead in terms of unit value when they have the economic disadvantage, and they don't have the production either. I mean, they're pushing 25 metal per second into their factory. Well, into one factory, 20 into the other. So they still have the opportunities. It's just... I don't know why they aren't rebuilding metal. Or reclaiming. There's there's a thousand metal reclaim they can or two thousand metal reclaim they could easily take. They have workers right here that the commander right in front. I don't know where Google Fox focuses. They're mostly focused on raiding, according to their cursor. So that's not the choice I would consider going for, but hey, at least the combination of gravity guns and slow beams does allow them to take apart these ogres. That is something that actually is very effective. That means the Ogres aren't going to have that option. That means that Golda is going to fall behind even further in terms of unit value. Well, they would if it were for the fact that they're 3,000 metal ahead because of all the units they've been building. And now their own Thunderbirds coming in here are going to completely nullify that last shot. Still, though, good try. It was, it was reasonably effective for a time. It just didn't remain reasonably effective. Regardless, Google Frog did not lose anything. That's the important thing. Golda lost some ogres. Google Frog lost basically nothing. The only thing they have that they haven't taken advantage of is this reclaim. And the metal. Which, actually, it looks like they are rectifying. Yeah, okay, they have a mason dealing with the metal part. Nothing dealing with the reclaim, but at this point, Google Frog does manage to raid their way into an economic parity situation. Still a bit tricky, because unit value is still... It's a dead heat. It's even. Metal usage is still in Golda's favor, but Google Frog has managed to be efficient with their killing. So it's back into an even game. And really, it just all comes down to whether or not this whole thing manages to be set up in a way that works... Well, works for Google Frog to actually take this. Or if Golda can find a way of breaking apart Google Frog's massive army and finally win this back. Because, I mean, Golda, I'd say, has been at an advantage the entire time. They've either been advantage, at an advantage or even. And so the question is, can that be maintained? I don't know. I mean, these Thunderbirds coming in here are a very strong tool for nullifying that advantage, but again, that didn't manage to do enough. 
They got one of the crashers down for a few seconds, but the rest of them are fine. So the rest of the Air Forces are going to have a really difficult time doing anything. Gorda's air control is gone. Neither player really has strong air control, but if there's, if the hacksaw goes down, there's, I mean, there's a field day here. Most of the map is actually fairly open. The Ravens can't easily be attacked in their base. The one thing, though, is that, yeah, as Feltas is pointing out, Gorda's base has nothing in it. Like, Google Fog could sweep in and just take it out. And I mean, the thing is, is that Google Fog's likely not going to because they're probably worried that Gorda's going to do the same thing and win a base trade. Or take the southeast and wipe out most of Google Frog's assets in case that happens. But if Google Frog went for it, they'd probably take it. And now they've gotten rid of the Ogres. This could very well be the time to go for it. With the Ogres down, there is nothing that can really threaten. At all. I'm not sure why Google Frog is playing it as safe as they are. I mean, they're probably assuming there's a lot of defenses. And yes, there are quite a few Lotuses. Right now, might not be the best time. I mean, there are times where it could work. And honestly... Sending the Ravens in on a suicide mission on top of the Scorchers could still take it. But, yeah, I don't, like, I'm, I really want to know what's going on inside Google Frog's head. I kind of wish they were watching right now so they could say what they were thinking when they were playing this game. Since this game, there's a lot of moments where I'm looking at them going, like, okay, I get it. Like, I would probably forget to do certain things, but Google Frog is a far more competent player than I am. Like, he's far more, far more, like, they're far more familiar with the game. So I'm just kind of surprised that they aren't doing things... They're, they're playing as carefully as they are. I don't expect to be intimidated or anything. They just are playing hyper-carefully. I mean, setting up the Cloakie Factory is probably where they're going to try to push in from there. Set up some Glaives. Oh no, set up some Phantoms. Going for the army directly. Like I said, I kind of... I get the logic. Go for the army. Take out the front lines. It's just... You have light vehicles. You have Scorchers. You can go around the map. You can deal with stuff. Or at least double check. Like, see how well defended Gorda's base is. Because right now, Google Frog, they have some idea. But I don't think they know what it's like now. That it has not changed one bit. But of course, that's a thing I often complain about with Zero K. Is that it feels like scouting doesn't happen very often in this game. Which it honestly doesn't. I mean, there's a lot of times where people just assume what's going to happen and then work from there rather than scouting. So, I wouldn't... I don't know, it's just... There's a lot of room that can be scattered out. There's a lot of things that can be known. And not a lot of stuff that I'm seeing Google Frog keep track of. Although at this point, now that Google Frog's lost all their Scorchers and is building entirely Ravager army, they're very clearly just trying to push through the pork and win that way rather than trying to get to the main base. I mean, it is worth noting, Zero K is not the kind of game where you hit one thing and destroy it and then the game's over. I mean, it's all down to whether or not Gorda decides to surrender, and I think that's what Google Frog is thinking, is that Gorda's not just going to surrender if they lose their main base. Or at least that seems to be the logic. But at the same time, if they lose their main base, well, there's nothing to rebuild things with. Like, there's no way that all these units can come back in the game, because they're dead. Still, though, the force to raid and destroy it is gone. It, it's done. There's... There's nothing more that really can be done here. Gorda might lose their commander, which will be a lot of metal lost... But they are getting out of there. They're nowhere near the Spectre range. Or Phantom range, rather. So, yeah, I mean, this is a bit of an, a bit of a dead heat, really. In terms of unit value, also a dead heat. And neither player is really willing to push to get the advantage. The only difference, though, is that Golda's forces are primarily in the air, whereas Google Frog is primarily on the ground. So, really, Google Frog still has a slightly stronger position with the air control they have and with the reclaim that they now have and all they really need now is a strong push you know get rid of a minotaur get rid of a few ogres get rid of a few of the of the welders i mean this minotaur going down is likely to be huge that's actually that's 2000 metal right there that's just, sorry not 2000 metal that's 850 metal that's gone but between the two of them it's going to be 1600 metal if they both go down and even then the welders they're helping out but at this point google frog continuing to push their attrition advantage which is great for them. I mean, it actually puts them in a unit value advantage on top of that. So now Google Frog, they're in a strong position to push forward, and they can easily take this. Probably going to go for Gorda's Commander first, and when that's done, that's going to be it. And at the same time, it looks like there was... No, the Thunderbird Strike didn't amount to much. Over to the north to get rid of some of the sides, but that's it. It didn't do a whole lot to stop raiding. The sides are still going up the top. They're still taking out Gorda's forces. They're still raiding. That's exactly what... I was asking for earlier, and that's exactly what Google Frog has done. At the same time, as these Ravagers, everything's coming together for Google Frog. I mean, I don't entirely agree with the exact timing, but it I can't disagree with the results. It worked. 
or at least has worked thus far to minimize where gold is placed. And it hasn't destroyed Golda's base, but it has still reduced their economy. It has still put Gold Google Frog at a massive economic advantage, so much so that they can't even produce enough to deal with this stuff. And all they really need to do is continue pushing. Not sure if Golda's going to throw in the towel, though. I mean, it looks like they're likely to. They really don't have much to deal with anything, and now we might see some buffs to tanks considering what happened. Especially considering the slow darts. Because, wow, those are... Those are strong. I mean, we're gonna see darts now. Darts are a thing. And yeah, there's the towel. There's the GG. Gota conceding and Google Frog taking after a bit of a slog, a bit of a hard fought battle. And a few opportunities that were missed from Google Frog, but like I said, I guess Google Frog wanted to play it safe. And considering that they won, I really can't blame them for it. So, congratulations, Google Frog. With that, however, is going to be it for me today so thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed that and i'm going to, if you guys are wanting to see more of me for whatever reason oh wow that sounds terrible if you guys want to see more of me which i assume you do since you've been watching this thus far then you can catch me later on i'm gonna be doing a battle right tournament later today in about three and a half hours I don't know exactly the channel. It's like Initio Gaming or something. I All the details are a little bit sketchy at this point. So I apologize I can't give more detail than that. I only know about what exactly is going to happen when. I don't know exactly where. But yeah, there is going to be... There's going to be a Battle Royale tournament at 3.30 or so. I'll host it on this channel just in case. Because I don't know where it's going to be. But I'll, if I don't stream it to this channel, I'll host it onto this channel. So you can watch that. And until then, I am going to be bidding you farewell. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night. Or at least good three and a half hours.